All right, everybody. It says I'm live. I'm not sure if that's the case. Uh, we'll check in just a second. So if anyone in the chat says I got one person in the chat, <laughs> if you'll let me know if you can hear me. And then we'll go from there. Uh, it's saying something about the video. I can't really see if folks are in here or not. Uh, da, da, da. I'm trying to talk. You let me know. I'm talking. All right, so I wave my hands around. Okay, it looks like there's something there. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like there's a little bit of a delay. We're gonna see how well that works out. Uh, let me see what happens if I drop the bit rate just a little bit more. And it should still be pretty good. All right. We'll see how that looks in just a second. Yeah, I know. Nobody's saying anything, so I don't know if it's working or not. Uh, let me run into the other room and see if I can get it on my computer. And then you might hear some feedback. like you can hear me it's working everything's good even though nothing's in the chat and I made a little intro for you guys so let's see if it works hey everybody welcome to the first episode of this campaign we are going to be using Clint and wildfire as we explore the Salem Street campaign available in Street Masters aftershocks stretch goals this may be something that is available later in a retail component if that's how you pick this up great otherwise for those of us here in 2020 we picked it up in the aftershock uh, kickstarter campaign so sit back enjoy i'm going to be explaining a little bit of what the rules are for this particular set of uh, fighters enemies and stage before we get started playing through the whole thing if you followed my last campaign playthrough you'd know that i used clint and megan well now that Clint has a story of his own, I'd like to play through it. And I wanted somebody who would be able to complement his skill set. And I think that Wildfire would be a good person to have along, as Clint does not have anything in his arsenal that will allow him to heal, and Wildfire has a lot of different support abilities that she's capable of, depending on how you play through. In order to adjust for the timing of where in the campaign we are, we need to look at the various story cards and see if they can be played simultaneously. If we're looking at Clint, he just needs a random rival. If we're looking at Wildfire, she needs a random ally to be her spirit guide. And under the Salem Street card, it tells us that it is a state of decay as our stage and any enemy deck is possible. It also requires the use of a Bartholomew figure to be used as part of the story uh, as it's being told. And that Bartholomew figure comes from the Davenport Manor enemy deck. There are no conflicts, so as long as we follow the rules and put random rivals, random allies when necessary into play, we can also select for ourselves at least or up to one ally per fighter that doesn't already have one. So let's look at what we got as far as our random inclusions. I used a random number generator to pick one of the 72 rivals and allies. I come up with Megan for my rival, which is unfortunate because in my gameplay, 
Megan was just helped out by Clint. So somehow they've been stabbed in the back and now maybe he has to track her down and take her out. You know, it's just what happens in the life of a bounty hunter. And then we have Hanzo as our spirit guide, which makes a quite a bit of sense because he was in the story for Kyo Ryu as a type of guide himself. So maybe uh, that's why he's helping her in that same capacity and perhaps will help him earn his way into becoming a full fighter for me in Essence of Evil when I play through that. So there is a little bit of a through line for the whole story of the game if I play through this scenario with that in mind. Finally, I have one more option to be able to have an ally, so I want to continue this theme of having my allies become full-fledged fighters later. I'm going to use Chan Chan. Not only do I want her because I want to have that through line of a story as I play through my game, I also need a bit of an ability to have random defense tokens be added to both the allies I have and my fighters because I don't really have much of a way to add those in uh, with the powers that uh, they have already. So keeping that in mind, I think this is going to be a good mix for us to get started and taking on a state of decay. Looking at the handy overview cards, we can see that this is a haunted house and it will have various aspects to it that we will have to encounter, including armor and stairs. There is a balcony area which will be separated from the bottom floor. That makes this stage unique from other tiles that we might be using in various other stages. One of the things that the objectives are becoming is haunted. And if we lose too many of the objectives, three in this circumstance, the fighters will lose. By having Megan and by having Bartholomew act in a way that makes it so only one fighter can attack them, if I put the Bartholomew uh, characters, um, uh, the card for the, the, the stage, the Salem Street card, which is what is going to control Bartholomew, into Wildfire's threat area, and I put the Megan rival, which Clint has been working with in the previous uh, campaigns I've gone through into his area, I can play this as the ghosts are haunting the fighters themselves in particular ways and exclusive ways to each of those fighters, like it's in their head. And that will make it a very interesting story for me to be playing out and make sense on the board to me. And you'll have the spirit guide in this case, Hanzo, trying to talk Wildfire out of it. And you have the uh, main enemy, in addition, the for this, the Cifarelli family, that maybe they were trying to pick this house up in some type of real estate, estate scam or, or some other nefarious means, and they're fighting along uh, with the ghosts, and maybe they don't really understand necessarily what's going on, and so they're still attacking the fighter. This could be a really great campaign with some really great storytelling as we get started here. And always remember you can jump back and forth and pause if you're watching the playback of this in order to read the cards if you have any questions. Now the Cifarelli family acts a little differently than some of the other enemies in the game which is the great strength of the modular deck system and what the Sadlers have created with Blacklist in that every enemy fighter stage they're all unique and wonderful and this one the Don is protected by an angel, Genesis, that he is blackmailed in some capacity. And Genesis is one of the strongest rivals or uh, types of non-bosses that you can have in the game. She is not a minion. She doesn't do anything that counts as minions, but she still is a figure. And she will get 12 health per player. She has a fairly strong attack. But once she's out of the game, she's out of the game, and the Don is pretty easy to take out with only 20 health. And we'll start on the side where he's protected. Notice no health is there, because he can't take any damage, but he can still attack you. So keep that part in mind. And finally, the last thing to discuss is the balcony stage condition. If you look at the map, we have two floors. The cool thing that you can do is if you toss someone off that balcony and onto the first floor, you can do three damage against them. So if you have a character like Tiger Asulis or Veda that can move characters and other things around the board, 
maybe even Gabriel, then you can throw them onto the first floor and do some extra damage. And uh, if you weren't able to finish them off with your own move, then let gravity do the work for you. So we're going to take a quick look at the objective locations. I picked up the yellow and the purple as the random ones, and the tokens go all the places they belong. We're going to get started. Thanks for uh, listening to the explanation. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and if you need to go back and check out any of the cards, then you can go ahead and do that, because it could be a little difficult to see based on what we have here. So uh, I'll keep looking up at the chat as I can, and uh, if you have any other questions, I'll try to answer them. This is my first time through with uh, everybody, so this is going to be fun. I, I've been through with Clint before, if you watched as I played through with Megan, but this is the first time uh, I'm going to get a chance to do anything with his stories. So that'll be cool. First things first, I need to decide on who's going to be the first player. And since Clint has range, he can shoot up into the balcony. I think I'm going to let him go first, and I will pull a threat card for him. And that's going to take two of these. So we have these new colored tokens. It's a little bit different from what I had before. And the cool thing about them, I said at the back, is they have uh, tokens that have five power. So I used to move these huge stacks, and I won't have to do that this time. Okay, so that's a red one. And the closest to Clint is currently one, two, three, one, two, three, four. It's this one here. All right. Now, it is imperative that I get rid of Megan. The only one I can hit is, that can hit Megan is Clint. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use his move step to go into this armor. And that's going to put me within one, two, three spaces of her. Uh, the armor gives me, I think, a armor. Okay, I gain one random defense token, so let's see what that is real quick. It's going to get a kick token. It is so important early on to get defense tokens. I cannot iterate that one enough. So the next thing I'll do is let Chan Chan, who also should have some tokens when she, uh, she starts out, move and attack here, still within range one, two, three of wildfire and of Clint. And if I'm handing out tokens, I might as well hand some to Hanzo, who should have had some to begin with, too. So uh, let's take a random one first for Chan Chan. That'll be a kick token. And then for Clint, that'll be a grapple token. It's going to be a little different getting used to these neoprene playmats and where they have everything spaced. It's a nice, nice difference, right? Grapple for wildfire. And then two regular damage headed towards that plumber. One is kick and one is grapple. So that'll get rid of this and it will add one of these. Are there any effects that happen? Nope. Nope. Okay. So, I've got cards in my hand I can do stuff with. Uh, gaining random defense tokens or being able to do extra damage during attack. I think extra damage during an attack is going to be of paramount importance. So that I'll use up the card step. And if I go ahead and attack from here and hit Megan, who should have three kick tokens and one grapple token, I will maybe be able to get through. We'll see. 
I'll probably just wear down some of that defense. Uh, that uses up the action because I'm firing at her. There is no um, line of sight in Street Masters. So. Um, when you figure out where things are, or barriers are at, you just count the hexes. So since he's got ranged attacks, he'll be able to affect that way. I need to start working on threat. And so she's going to move three spaces towards the nearest fighter. If she runs down, she will take three grapple damage. And this is where we're into uh, an odd situation. Would she avoid it? Or would she just run down and, and take the grapple damage? Uh, do we consider our folks to be idiots? Well, at this point, we might want to look at our movement rules in the book and it just says they will take the shortest path so there's no change in the rule book regarding elevation and there's nothing in uh, Here, saying that it is a blocked space. So, she's going to take a walk. And she's going to take three grapple damage. She'll go one, two, three. Um, or actually, one, two, three. Shortest path around. But... She's going to take three grapple damage. And let's see here. And attack. So there's nobody for her to attack. Move two spaces to gain, engage the most fighters possible. So that's here. Uh, well, it says here it can only be damaged by Clint. So she won't be damaged by the card. So that's fine for her there. She's going to deal one direct damage to Clint and one to Wildfire, where she's at. Now, Wildfire does not have a whole lot of health. So this could be a very quick game. We'll see how that part goes. But uh, luckily, as the rival, she was able to escape that hit. The plumber now is going to activate... Uh, attacking each fighter within three spaces. So right now the only fighter is Chan Chan. And he will attack for three. Two kicks and a punch. So that is one damage. Against the lovely Chan Chan. Uh... Then we will have to draw a card. Each fighter not attacked this way, one general damage. So it's going to do one general damage to Wildfire and one general damage to Hanzo. Ooh, that's difficult. So, yeah, we got to keep track of what's going on there. Yeah, we got four cards in hand there. So. We've got the right number. Then we're going to move up to Wildfire's turn. Have to draw a card. And we're going to get another plumber. So we're going to get a purple plumber. Closest to her is here. And he gets two punch tokens and a kick token. With Bartholomew. His figure here, we don't have to worry about how much. He's just kind of like a poltergeist. So, really should worry as much as possible about getting rid of 
the uh, minions since they can do a lot more damage. I like the idea of using her bear token as the card because that will give me random uh, defense tokens at the beginning of every turn and I really need those defense tokens. As you can see she has low health and the best thing I can do right now is send Hanzo up to attack the plumber since he can't do any damage against Megan. So I'm gonna go ahead and I guess that goes there and that goes there. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and send him up. He's gonna give a power to He's gonna give power to Clint. And he'll be one, two, three, four, five. No, he's gonna give the power to Wildfire so that he can do extra damage. And one, two, three. So she's within three. And he will hit four, four. Hondo's beast. He gives all the goodies. Uh, three kicks and a punch. So that's two damage. Wildfire is going to need to run up. Oh, sorry, here. Uh, I get to put tokens on something I control, which would give a damage token. Fixing that. Should have gone there. Um, from the previous turn. Then I don't want to suffer any direct damage. I'm just going to run up. And attack. That attack will be for two. Kick damage. And right now he has no kick defense. And he'll take two kick damage. Alright. Is there anything left for me to do? Oh, sorry. I should have used that there. I'm getting my bearings here, folks. Don't change anything. And that would have just given her a kick. It's okay. Something I need when the general damage starts getting done. All right. That means I have to go to activate. The spirit guide advances two towards the boss. So he's going to run one, two. He'll gain a defense token for hitting the armor. He gains a kick token. Uh, okay. Uh, if you are not within three spaces, so one, two, three, so it's not going to take direct damage from being away from me. It's going to bounce around quite a bit, probably. And then, on the activation for the Salem Street card, flip its token to the active side and place that token on its card. So, we're flipping this active and putting it here. So, this is going to start gaining two random defense tokens if it ever has for matching defense tokens, then it gets consumed. So I need to somehow be able to attack it at the same time. Then the plumber will activate. It does not need to advance anywhere and it's going to attack for three. Uh, the kick will be used and then Two damage will have to be taken. And one general damage for everybody not. So 
Uh, be one there and one there. One there. Okay. So we are now at the point where we have to draw a card. Uh, next round. It's nice to have some attacks available. Then we have to go over to enemy turns. And first up is Dawn. Each fighter must resolve the shakedown effect on the leftmost card in the threat area or move one of their defense tokens to this card. Well, there's no shakedown effect on the leftmost card. So should it be read as the most left shakedown effect? Or do the negative effects from being part of their stories cancel that out? It's uh, an interesting thought. I can either have it attack or it gets to continue doing those things. If we read it in the most literal sense, it does nothing. But it will do something later as these cards are removed. That being the case, I think we leave it as is and go to the next step. Uh, we have the option of having to move a defense token. So if it wasn't one, then it was the other. Let's just say we're going to have to move the defense token. We'll give it that. That seems fair, right? And then Genesis has to activate. It's going to gain two round of defense tokens and advance three. So it'll gain a kick and a punch. And advance three towards the nearest fighter to attack, which will cause it to cross the rail and take three grapple damage. Those wings don't work too well just yet, but it will attack a fighter for four. And that's unfortunate. I may have to go get more tokens. We'll see how that goes in just a second. All right, now we're gonna move to the stage. It's going to move three tokens to the nearest inactive objective. This one is active, so one, two, three. And there's nothing else going on with that. There are activates here. If it, Gain two random defense tokens for the yellow. Ooh, that's not good. Because if we get four of the same ones, that's not helpful. Uh, all right, so nothing else going there. We'll pull a card. We get Undying Vengeance. Each active of Objective gains an attack value equal to the number of defense tokens on it and attacks a different fighter if able. They are not. Each objective is not attacked this way gains one random defense token. So we're going to have grapple token. I don't know if they gain it or not gain it. I think you can gain it. And then when it comes back down, if it flips, then it's something you have to worry about. Oh, where'd it go? Uh, I think that's where it flew. Anyway, it's still random. No matter what, it's random. That was terrible. But we need to do some resetting now. Here, yeah, I 
think I need to get some more damage tokens. Give me one second to grab out some more damage tokens that I think are in this box here. And I was wrong. They are in the other room. Give me one quick second to grab some more damage tokens. have higher health values I'm gonna have to have more single damage tokens available so that's just a quick tray and there I go all set okay okay now we're going to we've done all this fun stuff we're gonna have to pull a Cifarelli card Tommy Green Tommy. Closest location is here. He starts with no tokens. Okay. That's all fine and good. And then we'll flip our business back. Look at our cards. We got some abilities, we got some tactics. Uh I can cheap shot her, and that will get rid of some defense tokens. Uh, or I can start with. I can know your enemy and gain defense tokens of my own. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go know your enemy. And I discard defense tokens and gain three defense tokens from enemies. So I'm going to take a kick, take a punch, and take a punch. So that's what it allowed me to do. So the discard pile is done. I used my card step and now I need to just attack for as much damage as I can we'll see how that goes I'm gonna go ahead and start with Chan Chan and that is going to allow Chan Chan first to gain a defense token And then it's going to allow Clint, since he's standing there, to get a defense token. Kick. And he's going to do two damage against the plumber. And that is worth a punch and a grapple. Sets that back. I need to be able to do more damage, but it's not really going to help me too much. I think the best thing I can do is try to get rid of Megan since she does all this extra movement and double damage. So I'm going to hit for three. Uh, puts that one back there. Yep. So, three dice. Okay, so that's going to give me a defense token. And it's going to do three damage. So I'll take rid of two of hers. And finally, do some damage there. Okay, so that was our action step. We can move. 
but I don't know that it's going to really help me too much. Unless I want to start getting rid of some tokens on this. I think I'm just going to stay there. I'm going to stay there and get hit. <laughs> Megan is going to advance three spaces and attack. She attacks for three. Two kicks and a grapple is enough to flip Clint over. So that's a good sign. Because Clint does a remarkable amount of damage. Actually, I was able to also, sorry, put one of these back because of the activity there. Um, which six general damage if she has no uh, defense then uh, I can boost it with steely gaze and deal damage or attack so I think it's deal damage and then attack some other way I'll figure that part out in a minute the plumber has to Attack for three. He's going to do that against the Chanster. Two grapples and a kick. So that's two damage. And Neil's each fighter not attacked this way. One general damage. So that's here. That's here. And that's here. So I just flipped. So yeah, okay. I'm trying to keep track, but sometimes there's a lot. Tommy attack each spider fighter within three spaces. So right now that is only Clint. He's doing a spray and pray for four. Jeez. Clint may not make it. Uh, I'll take three. Which leaves two. I need a five. Yikes. It's rough in here. Real, real rough in here. Uh, then he's going to gain one random defense token, so I'll give him that one random defense token. He gains a grapple. Rough. Alright, we'll get a card. So, okay, well, we already have one of those, so we'll see how that goes. Um, this turns over. We have to get back what we're doing here at the start we have no other so he, uh, she's gonna win two random defense tokens needing them terribly bad uh, another plumber goes into play so that's two uh, of these one of these See where that gets us. And we get a grapple and a kick. So, all right. Uh, Hanzo, we need to move him as close to wildfire as possible all the time. So, we're going to send him, giving him a power. Uh, yep, giving him a power over to Wildfire, and that's at four now. Okay, she is set. He will attack for four. Uh, this guy has no 
He's already got four on him, so he's just going to die. We don't have to roll anything. And we get to finally get a loot. Candy bar. I can heal one damage from each fighter and gain one defense token of their choice. Since everybody's damaged, I'm going to go ahead and heal a damage. Because they all need it. Um, and they get defense tokens of their choice. So... Choices have been made. Good times. Um, this will move over. I got rid of one, right? This will move back up here. We have reset, and we haven't even used any of our other stuff yet. So we'll look at the cards we've got. Um, where we move, we still need to be within contact of Hanzo I can I have some attack cards that are kind of useful having attack cards in Wildfire's discard is beneficial to her so I'm going to run at Genesis, and I'm going to use this Wunzusi Clutch. I do contain spirit cards, so I can't do much there, but it's going to give me two dice to attack with. It is a grapple attack. It's going to do two damage. So that's going to be five total since she doesn't have any. We've got 19 left to go. Let's see if we can do anything with our regular attack. Uh, if I suffered two damage, I could play a spirit card from my hand, but I don't think. I only have a tactic, so. If I was fainting and resolving effects with the crane, uh, the crane would give me defense tokens used to block. It's not really going to help me on that one, so uh, maybe in a second I'll, I'll be okay with that. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and attack for two, which is going to use up the action step. This is going to be a kick attack, so Genesis has kick defense, which means this will just end up over here. Um, yeah, I don't need to, to do anything from there because I still want to keep getting these cards here, uh, or those uh, tokens there. All right. Um, So the next thing we do is go to the threat cards and he's, we got to have Hanzo try to move two spaces towards the boss. I uh, don't take any more direct damage. Uh, then if his own flip the uh, active side, otherwise object against one random defense token. This is going to get one random defense token. So that is a kick for this one. All right. So we could lose it, you know, with the, the two tokens that are, are matching on it very quickly. Um, so the plumber, blue plumber. Did I not put a blue plumber? Did I just put the card in and then not... Uh, put the token down yeah or I didn't do that so otherwise 
he should have been there the whole time. But he's unaffected. Nothing else would have been affected by it. So don't worry uh, on that end. Uh, he's going to try to advance three spaces towards the nearest fighter. So he's going to run in there and he'll take three grapple damage. Because they not so smart. Um, but he's going to hit real hard. Attacking each fighter within three spaces. So, uh, da, 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 da. he's gonna hit Hanzo. For three kicks. So that's three damage. No kick defense. He's gonna hit Wildfire for damage. Uh, so that's one, two. She flips at six. So she's going to flip and she's going to have one damage assigned to her. Okay. Put these away real quick. And then he's going to deal one general damage to the other fighters. So <clears throat> there's that. Then she gets a card. So this will be another ability. Huh. All right. So that'll allow me to, to do some stuff again from the discard pile. That part's cool. The Dawn is going to activate next. Because now we're on enemy turns. If that helps uh, understand what's going on. Uh, the leftmost card in the threat area, move one defense. So, still not a shakedown, but still has to move a defense token over here. Okay. Genesis will... Gain two random defense tokens. And it is a kick and a punch. Uh, then it will advance and attack for four. You can make a decision. Wildfire is hurting. Clint is hurting less so, but that'll put him at 10. And yeah, he's just gonna, he's gonna have to suck that damage back. You don't have a choice. So, we'll see how well that goes. Uh, stage, the boss moves three towards the nearest inactive objective. One, two, three. And then we're gonna pull a card, nope. Uh, this is the only active objective, so it is going to gain two random defense tokens. Dumpy punches, dumpy punches, dumpy punches. Oh, we got a punch and a kick. Um, we need to get rid of punches. We need to get punches, rid of punches bad. So, it's a very high chance it will get consumed. Okay, this is still inactive, so... Okay, I missed something, and we'll just have to fix it next time. They're not supposed to go across the banister when activating. Meh. If you run into something that you can't fix, it's too hard to deal with, just keep playing. The game's hard enough. So they would have just run around and tried to get down the stairs. It would be a different game right now. Probably wouldn't be taking as much damage, and I'd have a lot more opportunity to... Uh, try to get those armor tokens and like just get armored up really good good so then moving closer to me actually makes it harder for me as opposed to 
easier for them. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to try to remember, don't have them cross. Have them run around from the next time. Let's just say they smartened up in the middle of it, and now they're not falling over the banister. But before, maybe they weren't so bright. We'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, so, da 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 Draw card. Uh, Undying Vengeance, again, gains an attack value for the number of defense tokens on it and attacks a different fighter if able. So nobody's in range. Um, that does not gain this way one random defense token. Don't be punched, don't be punched, don't be punched! <coughs> it's punch. So since it's punch, it's going to be consumed are removed from the game. So, uh, that's bad for us. And he's going to go here now. So, remove from the game means remove from the game. Then we have to do some resetting. Okay, beginning of the turn, gain some damage, okay, he's here, we have to take our lumps with another Tommy, which lets us reset those, blue Tommy will go here, um, I can, I need to obliterate uh, Megan as quickly as possible. So I'm going to deal six general damage to her, uh, which will flip my card back over using up the action step. And it's one and five. Um, this did not let me I didn't use it here because I just wanted to use the 6th general uh, and not be an attack so next I'm going to do an attack and I want to do a cheap shot against Tommy here, or the plumber, uh, red plumber. So I'll have to use my move step, two, three, in order to punch him with my card step, and I'll exhaust that using that, and that's going to give me three dice to attack. Okay, I got one explodey, which is good. I get a punch token, also good. Let's see what I get. Another explodey. Oh, another explodey. And another punch token. So that's why you keep going, is you might get more punch tokens. That is a total of five damage against the red plumber, uh, which brings us to seven. Red plumber is defeated. And. We get a loot card. Survival rations. Anytime you discard this card, heal two damage and gain one defense token of your choice. I don't see a reason to not use it immediately, considering how messed up I am right now. Uh, that'll dump this 10. 
and bring it back to an eight. I might make it another couple of rounds. We'll see. Um, Tommy's. Green Tommy is going to attack each fighter within three. There's no one within three. Gain a random defense token. So I think he just stands there and he's spraying away and shooting. So he's just going to gain random defense tokens. Okay, punch token. Blue Tommy is going to hit uh, each fighter. So he's going to hit Wildfire and Hanzo. I need to get them out of his range badly. Oh boy. Four grapple tokens. Um, that's a total of eight. So less than half. Three grapple and a punch. So that's three damage. Uh, oh, I don't have a five, so just have to stack up six. He's one health away from dying, and I can't really have the spirit guide die, so I need to come up with a different solution. <laughs> Get him out of the way. Get him some health. It's uh, it's gonna be problematic. Okay. Um, yeah. Then he's gonna gain a random defense token. Not a grapple. Oof. That's rough. Well, everyone's going to unexhaust now. Bonnie. Oh, she is a rough cookie, too. Man. I don't think we're going to make it. I don't think it's going to matter that much if I have to redo it because then I won't have things running off the banister and maybe the next match will be more uh, <laughs> more by the book and a little easier. We'll see how that, that part goes. Um, yeah. Good old yellow Bonnie. Now you can't tell, but I made it like extra special on the paint jobs on these things. So it actually looks like she's wearing sequins. Turbo Dork has some really great metallics that let you get that effect and that's what I used for the Bonnies and they look very much completely like their flapper selves at the beginning of the turn I get two defense tokens from that Makwa so that'll be a punch and a kick so kick punch that's exciting um, four damage against something. Or just run him completely out of the way. I'll take direct damage if I'm not standing with him. So... I think what I have to do is exhaust Hanzo, give the power to Clint, move him here so that he can get a free armor token. Which 
might save his life. And then Wildfire has to do something and then get out of there. What are my options? Well, I can do a bunch of kick attacks against the plumber, targeting each enemy engaged with me. And then I can play one spirit card from my hand or discard pile and flip the card. Uh, in my hand, I can do a bunch of attacks. So, in my hand, I'm going to do Anawen. Anawen. Yeah, dive. I never learned any native uh, wordings, even though my grandmother's command, she, she didn't really have anything to teach me. So we're just going to go with however that's pronounced. So I have one spirit card, which allows me to get uh, an additional enemy. So I get to hit two enemies for one attack. Let's hope it's for a lot. That attack will be kick damage. So I get a kick. Defense token. It did one kick damage to this fella. One kick damage to Genesis. So that got rid of some tokens, but it didn't really do a whole lot of damage. Um, I don't have any spirit cards. Let me place the card step. If I faint the Makwa, it will allow me to play an attack from your hand or discard pile. So I can play it and resolve the bear effect. Uh, so it's going to go the... Yep. Okay. This is going to work out. I get to play the Mazunsi Clutch, which is going to allow me to attack for three. What do I want to attack for three? Well... I think I can get rid of the plumber most easily. So this is a grapple attack and he doesn't have any grapple tokens. I'm going to get a grapple token and deal two grapple damage to this guy, which is going to be a total of five damage on him. And then I uh, resolve its bear effect and I get to do two direct damage to an enemy engaged with me which is going to be enough to get rid of this plumber sorry Mario uh, she was here yeah okay uh, Bonnie a little closer gives me a loot card I got smoke bombs and I can move a space for three so I don't know just say it's up there I know it has loot down here but that's just not enough space for what I need um, so then I can attack for three, targeting each enemy engaged with me. Right now that's Genesis, and it's going to be a kick attack that she doesn't have any resistance to. Okay, so let's start with that. It'll be two damage. And I can 
play a spirit card, which brings Makwa back into play. And again, that kick, uh, did I gain a kick token? I did not. And I'm flipping this card. So a lot of manipulation going on with that combination of Anawana Dive and Makwa. So lots of stuff can happen there. Um, if I could pull the same thing off using other spirit effects, she might be able to get a lot of healing doing that same type of uh, action. We'll see how that goes. Uh, now I need to move for the move step to get closer to Hanzo so that he doesn't move too far away. Okay, so she was here. So I actually need to move one, two, three in order to stay within the two that he's got to be within. Oh man, that sucks. Yeah, I got to be within three spaces of the spirit guide to keep him alive. So there's that. Everything's been used up. Action's been used up. And now I need to move the spirit guide two. One, two. Because he's going to go towards the boss. And then uh, I think actually. It rolled. This might be active now. I don't know. I'm probably going to have to play through it again anyway, so I'm not going to worry that much about it. Um, it's definitely going to be active on the next turn, uh, so I don't forget. Uh, activate. Flip it still on the active side. Yep. It's active now. And then Bonnie, four spaces. So the nearest fighter within four spaces is Wildfire. Uh, okay, so she's gonna attack for two. Those are two punches. So luckily those turn into power. Oof. All right. I need to gain a card. One of Zassi Slash. So this is another attack that could be useful on the next round. They've all been used up. Right? So now we have to go back to the Dawn uh, on the leftmost threat area or give up a token. Give up a token. Give up a token. And Genesis is going to gain two random defense tokens. So she's going to grapple and kick. All the turns kind of blend together at a certain point. I don't remember if I did them last time or not. She'll go three spaces. One, two, three. And attack for four. Two grapples, two kicks. So that is two kicks and two damage, which. Any fives left? Nope. So I need to put more fives in that batch. Um, all that's done. Good. Then we're back here. There is no inactive objective, so 
we don't worry about it, then this is going to activate and gain two random defense tokens. Uh, so it's going to get a grapple and a punch. Okay. Grapple is problematic now. Draw a card. Untethered spirits. Each active objective gains two defense of a single type. They have none of. So this is going to gain two kick tokens. Okay. Uh, yep. I'm going to reset. Gain a damage token. Let's do the case. Uh huh. Did I draw a card? I don't think I did. Because that's the same things that was in my hand last time. So. That's what my hand should have been. I draw another of these cards. Family loyalty. Tactic. Uh, I have to get rid of minions. Ugh. Okay. So this is going to be problematic. I think the only way... Is I have to move... I have to do shakedown effects and then I can move the fire adjacent to a minion. Then I have to move power. So that's just going to suck me down for power. Okay. We'll see where that, that gets me. Uh, at least it's not another minion. I got things I got to think about here. Uh, I can attack and then move. I can do kick attacks and then move. And that'll help me maybe get rid of Megan. So uh, I'm going to move him up. Move step. Do a get back with the card step. Exhaust a steely gaze. And that's going to give me three dice to attack with. Okay, one explodey. Another explodey. So that's enough to take out Megan, which satisfies the requirements of, oh man, that's not good, satisfies the requirements of the mission, now that she's gone. So now I just have to, no matter what happens, I've won this uh, part of the campaign. So that's out of there. Nothing I have to think about now. I've won. I got a flare gun. Uh, I can discard from the enemies defense tokens. So... Yeah, each enemy. So I'll get rid of two defense tokens from as many enemies as possible. Uh, that'll help me get rid of a bunch of them. And as if it were can a target so it doesn't really say that it really is uh, and now I can move as well up to two spaces uh, one two 
spaces. Okay. Okay. That gets me within range so I can still shoot at Bonnie and get defense tokens from Chan Chan. So I'm going to go move up the Chanster and let's get some defense tokens going. some damage on spaces so or on other stuff so let's just get it out of the way and hit for two all right I get to choose which ones I take let's take a couple of grapples and I'm gonna do general damage so it's gonna just take those out make it a little easier for Hanzo maybe someone else to do some damage we'll see how that goes in a second uh, Tommy here three spaces three spaces so the only one that's gonna get hit is wildfire for three but there's some random defense tokens that have to be situated That should end the turn for Clint. And I got a lot of tokens over there. Maybe I could do some changeovers. She's going to have to draw from another plumber. Okay, so uh, that puts a plumber here. And that's two punch. Defense. Kick. Defense. Two random defense tokens from Makwa. Grapple and a punch. Okay. Uh, I could. take a run at the armor when Genesis attacks it's not each it's just the nearest fighter if I gave one power one two three four if I gave one power to Clint do some direct damage if I give it to wildfire more chance of being able to heal so let's say let's say let's say let's say I go ahead and exhaust I give a power to wildfire in the hopes that she'll be able to figure out how to heal I'm going to one two three so after moving through that space, get a random defense token. Casper the Friendly Ghost gives him a punch token. And, 
And he's unable to attack. Wildfire. Let's see what we got. Uh, we played a bunch of cards and abilities and different things, so. Um, uh, I can get random defense tokens for things in my hand. Or I can do an attack. If I faint again, I can play an attack card from my hand or discard pile and resolve its bear effect. Uh, I can make an enemy retreat or do direct damage. And if I wanted, I could take two direct damage to do a spirit card. So if I did this and then that, I could just keep taking damage in order to make that happen. Uh, or I can play uh, this Ajijak spirit card and then get a crane effect. Um, draw loot or gain something. Each fighter within two spaces may heal two damage. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my card to play Ajijak and faint to play an attack from my hand and resolve its crane effect. The attack will be Wawazisi Slash. I do not control two spirit cards, so I will get uh, this punch attack for two dice. So that did it explode. Also known as a crit. So that is three. It was a punch, regular damage. So it's three punch damage against her. So that actually gives us a 10 total. The crane effect is each fighter within two spaces may heal two damage. So uh, this becomes a four. Saving Hanzo for maybe another round. Uh, Two damage here turns that 10 back into an 8. Okay. Easy slash is now in the discard pile. It's the best I could do. There's not much else I could think of in order to uh, try to gain some more health uh, or keep anyone around anymore. We'll see how that affects us as we now uh, are going to advance two spaces towards the boss. And since we move through the space, Gain a random defense token. It'll be a grapple for Hanzo. And Bartholomew. We're going to gain a defense token. It is a grapple. Very close to losing that one. Bonnie, um, within four spaces, one, two, three, four, is going to attack for two against the wildfire. Okay, so that actually flips her over, taking an additional damage. Uh, Do 
yourself as organized as possible. Okay. So we're going to be able to do some crazy stuff in a minute. Then the plumber, uh, he's way over there. He's going to attack. He's going to advance three sp uh, within three spaces. So he's going to move up. And then he's going to attack Clint and Chan Chan. So that's unfortunate, but it's going to happen. And it's going to happen for three. Chan-Chan's closest. She's going to take one damage. Clint's going to take three hits. We'll see what happens with him. Uh, okay. So he's going to gain two power. And he's going to take one damage. Where does that put us? He has taken nine damage. He's got eight left. And five power has been used to flip his card. Okay. Something else has to happen. This enemy deals each fighter not one general damage. So that's going to go one power here and lose one here. Okay. Then she's going to get a card since that's all over with. Okay. Next up is the Dawn. Uh, so we have to resolve a shakedown effect or ditch a token. So I'm going to go ahead and say let's ditch tokens instead of shakedown effects. Um, and then she's going to gain two defense tokens. A grapple and a kick. Let's see if we can get her stack a little neater. Three spaces nearest fighter and attack. She is not having to move. She's just going to attack. Four four. And where does that put us? Uh, wildfire has one health left. Those are poor decisions. By our I entirely mean mine. My poor decisions. Okay. Uh, that one health. We'll see where that gets us. Uh... Nope, 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 nope. Not yet. Uh, most remaining health resolves shakes down effect of the minion with the least remaining health. Well, all the minions have health. The least health is Bonnie. Flip three of your power to their defense side and move them to the Dawn. If you have less than three power, discard one card from your hand or fighter. Ooh. Jeez. So I have less than three power, so I have to discard a card. I will discard a True Grit. That sucked. And then a fighter adjacent to a minion. I am not adjacent to any minion, so I can't set any power. Okay, then let's see where we're at. Uh, I have to activate here. And that is a kick and a punch. So we get one more round 
before this one is consumed. Okay. Wow, that's a rough one. Uh, okay. Draw a card. Wrath of the Restless deals each fighter one damage for each defense token on it. If no damage is dealt this way, place one random defense token on each objective. The objective with the most defense to tokens on it, which is here. One general damage for each defense token on it, which is eight. Uh, each fighter, that's not each fighter engaged, it's each fighter. So with that, I do believe there's nine here. Clint's dead. That's 13 here. Wildfire's dead. We've had a total obliteration by zombies. It's rough. So, what do we learn? One, don't move past the banister. So, when you set up the enemies uh, in this configuration, they should try to walk around and get down. Uh, they, if they have ranged attacks like Tommy here, he could still attack. If the fighters have ranged, they can still shoot up and hit those guys. Uh, like Clint, uh, they can't cross the barrier going up, but they can cross going down. So that would be it. We lost this one. So our Salem Street situation is uh if the fighters lose and we lost then we have to add bartholomew as a rival to the story pool which we'll do and then we're going to move on to part two with, with that additional rival however since we are moving on we have to look at the states that we have here so on this card uh, Spirit Guide was not defeated. It was not defeated. And we are moving on in the story. It does not say if the fighters win. <laughs> that part doesn't matter. It's not defeated. But we did defeat Megan. So all in all, we have hero success, but stage losses. So our heroes scared off by the monsters we should go back to the citadel we should regroup tell everybody what happened and think about how we could possibly defend against these supernatural creatures especially this horrible gremlin thingamajig that is somehow making everything worse what's going to happen next time well we're going to have another rival randomly because that's how clint's stories work we're gonna have another thing to do with the spirit guide because that's how wildfires stuff works and we're gonna have a different set of stage effects with uh, bartholomew as a rival so it's been fun like i said whenever i make mistakes i do not care i just don't uh, because it's if I'm having fun, then I'm doing it right, and that's just how I feel about this, everything. I admitted to the mistakes I knew about, so you can not have that affect you when you play through. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the stream, and I'm going to keep playing, and you should too. You guys have a good one.